I'm absolutely obsessed with Autogen. It is the coolest piece of AI technology that I've seen since I saw ChatGPT originally. I already created a beginner's tutorial video and overview of Autogen and what its capabilities are, but now I'm gonna give you a more advanced tutorial and we're gonna set it up on our computer. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. And not only that, I have plans for a series of videos about Autogen. If there's any Autogen related topics that you wanna see, let me know in the comments. And on that that note, let's go. As a reminder, Autogen allows you to set up multiple artificial intelligence agents that work together to accomplish any task that you give them. They can use tools, they can code, they can execute code. It is phenomenal. Think about it like ChatGPT plus code interpreter plus plugins, but fully customizable and you can drop it into your application that you're building. And so I'm gonna show you how to actually use the code locally. And this is gonna be a little bit of a slower paced video because I am gonna walk you through step-by-step step each line of code that I'm creating. So you're gonna need just a few things to get this to work. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any code editor that you want. You're gonna need Anaconda installed and you're gonna need an OpenAI account. I'm still working on getting an open source model set up, so we're gonna continue using OpenAI for now. Okay, with Visual Studio Code open, we're gonna create a new file. Now, once you have that new file created, go ahead and click save. And I already created a folder called Autogen, so if you don't already have a folder specific for this project, go ahead and create one. I'm gonna rename this to app.py, and I'm gonna save it. Okay, now that we have that all named, let's go ahead and click this little button in the top right of Visual Studio Code, and that'll open up our terminal. And next, we're gonna create a new Conda environment to help manage all of our Python versions and modules. So you should already have Anaconda installed, and if you don't, go ahead and install it. Just Google how to do it if you don't know how. And the command we're gonna type is create-n autogen python equals 3.11.4, and then hit enter. Hit enter again to proceed. And one thing to keep an eye on is what version of Python that Conda is using, what version of Python Python is using, and then what version of Python Visual Studio Code has referenced, which you can find in this bottom right-hand corner right here. So we're gonna be using 3.11.4 across the board. Now we're gonna activate the environment by highlighting this right here, and then paste conda activate autogen and autogen is the name of my environment and then i can tell it's working because it's right there next we need to install autogen so the command to do that is pip install pi autogen then hit enter now i have already installed it so it says requirement already satisfied and i'm just checking the version and i type python dash dash version and it's using 3.11.4 okay now back to app.py we're just going to import autogen at the top and the reason you're seeing this little predictive text is because i use github copilot so just ignore that and in fact I'll just turn it off for now. The next thing we're going to do is set up the configuration JSON for Autogen. So we type config list, open bracket, open curly bracket, and we're going to define the model first. And the model we're going to be using today is GPT 3.5 Turbo. I would definitely recommend using GPT 4, but for the purposes of just showing you getting the code working, we don't need to use that one. And there it is. So we're using GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. And the next thing we're going to need to do is put in our API key. So if you don't already have an OpenAI account, go ahead and sign up for one, and then we're going to grab our API key. So I'm on OpenAI right now. I go ahead and click Create New Key, and I'm going to name it Autogen, and then Create Key. And don't worry, I will revoke this key before publishing this video. Go ahead and copy it. Let's switch back to Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to paste it right in there with quotes and then let's add a comma there. Now we need to set up the LLM config object. So we're going to type LLM config equals open curly brackets. So we'll set the request timeout. And these are all pretty standard settings. So you can just use what I'm using here. Request timeout just kills the request after a certain amount of time if OpenAI's API isn't responding. Next, we need seed and we'll use 42. And seed is for caching. And this is actually an amazing feature. Basically, once you run one of these tasks once with these agents, it caches the response. So if you run the same task again, it's gonna use the cached version, so it saves you money and time. So if you change the seed number, or 
if you delete the cache, it'll redo it. But otherwise, if you're using the same prompt and the same seed, it's gonna use the cached version. Next, we just pass in the config list into the LLM config, just like that. So that's what we just created up here. Next, we're gonna define the temperature. And this is a value between zero and one, where the lower the temperature, the less creative and the less unique the response is gonna be from the AI, and the higher the temperature, the more creative and the more unique the responses will be. For coding tasks, we want pretty non-creative responses. So that's why we're gonna keep it at zero, but feel free to play around with this value. Next, we're gonna create our first assistant. So we'll call it assistant equals autogen.assistantagent, open parentheses, we're gonna name it assistant, and then we pass it in the LLM config, just like that. Now, you can create as many of these assistant agents as you want, you can give them different names. So if you want a team of AI agents, this is how you would do it. You can say, like, this is my CTO, you would copy it, here's my CEO, and you can put an entire team together or whatever makes sense for your use case. But for this, I'm just gonna use a single agent. I forgot to mention this, but I wanted to add it in after the fact. If you're gonna create more than one assistant agent, you definitely wanna provide a system message to each of them so that you're defining the roles that you want them to take on. Next, we're gonna create our user proxy. And as a reminder, that is an agent that acts on behalf of the user or yourself. It can do things automatically on your behalf, like executing code and responding to the assistant agent, or it can ask you at each step for approval to do those things. So we're gonna type user proxy equals autogen dot user proxy agent. We're gonna open parentheses. We're gonna name it user proxy. And you can have multiple user proxies just like you can have multiple assistant agents. So go ahead and play around with that as well. Next, we're gonna define the human input mode. And this is where you can define how much manual input you wanna give. And opening up the documentation for Autogen, we have three options for human input mode. We have always, so at every single step, it's gonna ask you to either approve or respond or just during terminate. So just when the task is completed, it'll ask you for feedback or next steps or never, and it will never do it. And so for our use case, we're gonna use terminate. Switching back to VS Code, that's what we put here. So human input mode equals terminate. Next, we're gonna set max consecutive auto reply. And that just sets the maximum number of times that the agents can go back and forth with each other. So we're gonna set it to 10. Now, if you set this too high, there is the risk that the agents will get into an infinite loop and continue to go back and forth with each other, which will be quite costly. So we're gonna leave it at 10. The next thing we need is this is termination message. And essentially what this is, is it's looking for a certain keyword that ends the task. So when it sees terminate, it knows the task is over. And if we have the human input mode equals terminate, that's when it's gonna ask us for input. Next is code execution config. So this allows us to set a couple settings for when we actually execute code. So we're gonna set the working directory to be web. And what this will do is from within whatever folder that you're using for this application, it's gonna create another folder web and any files that it creates or any code that it writes, it's gonna write it to that folder. So we do comma and then we pass in the LLM config like usual. And last is the system message, which is essentially the instructions to tell the user proxy how to determine if the task has been completed. So we're just gonna use the one that Autogen came with and I'll paste that in right now. So it looks just like this. And then we close the parentheses right there. Next, we're gonna create a variable to store the task that we want the agents to complete. So I'm just gonna call it task equals, and then three quotes, open it up. And this is where we can put any task that we want. So I'll I'll say, give me a summary of this article. And then I'll just paste a random article in here. And obviously you can extend this code to be much better where you can enter any URL, not just hard coding a URL in the task. But for now, I'll just leave it at this. Next, we need to actually initiate the chat. So we do user proxy. So this is what we've already created up here. And user proxy always starts the chat dot initiate chat, open parentheses. We're gonna pass it the assistant, and that's what we created right here. And then we're gonna pass in a message, and that's the prompt or what we're calling the task. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. 
and technically we're done. I'm gonna extend it a little bit more, but let's make sure it all works first. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click play up in the top right. Okay, there it goes, and it's starting. Okay, so unfortunately, ChatGPT 3.5 really does not work well with this. Sometimes I'll get it to actually write code and complete the task, but often I get things like this, and the agents just go back and forth saying, thank you, I can't do it, thank you, I can't do it. So good thing that we set the max auto reply to be 10 because this would have just kept going indefinitely but we know it works that's the point point. and one other thing i'm going to point out is now we have this cache folder right here and this is storing the cache under 42 so if we were to run this again it's not actually going to hit the api endpoint now i want to show you this actually working so let's exit out of here clear the screen and rather than give me a summary of this article, I'm gonna give it an easier task. So I'm just gonna say write Python code to output numbers one to 100 and then store it in a file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna change this to GPT-4. And now it should work much better. So let's go ahead and click play again. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna clear this cache. I'm just gonna delete this. Here we go. User proxy to assistant, write Python code to output numbers one to 100, then store it in a file. All right, here we go. So the assistant says, sure, here's the Python script to do so. And then we can run this script and there it goes back and forth. And I think it misunderstood what I wanted. I think it actually output the numbers one to 100 into a file, which is not quite what I wanted. So I can improve the prompt. And actually it says, please give feedback to assistant. So before I do that, let's just verify. Great, the script has successfully generated the numbers one to 100 and stored them in the file numbers.txt. So if I click this web folder up here, there's numbers numbers.txt and there's numbers one to 100. But that is not what we wanted, was it? So as the feedback, I'm gonna say, so I accidentally quit out of here before giving it feedback. So let's just run it again. I'm gonna delete this web folder. I'm gonna delete the cache. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna change the prompt and then store the code in a file. And then I'm gonna save, clear, and then play. Okay, here we go. We have the code right there. To save it in a file, you can create a new file named printnumbers.py, paste the code in above. Okay, so it executed it. Then it says the Python script has successfully printed. The task is now complete. If we look in that web folder, printnumbers.py, beautiful. There it is. So it wrote the code locally. So now I wanna extend the code a little bit. Now I obviously can do this in a different order so I'm not rerunning it from scratch every time but I'll show it to you anyways. So for task two, we're gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna say, change the code in the file you just created to instead output numbers one to 200. So the first thing it's gonna do is do one to 100 and then store the code. Then it's gonna change that code to do one to 200. And we do need to do the user proxy initiate chat again. And last, instead of human input mode terminate, I'm gonna say never. I just wanted to execute all this code. That's not risky at all. Okay, so now we got it all saved. So then I'm gonna delete the cache. I'm gonna delete web right here. I'm gonna make sure that it says task two here. So I'm gonna give it task two, save, and then we're gonna play. Okay, so it output numbers one to 100. It looks like it already created this numbers.py file. Now it says change the code in the file. This is the second task. So it should adjust the file, hopefully it does it. Okay, so it looks like it did something. And let's see, great, the script has successfully executed. You should have a file numbers.txt in the same directory as your script. Okay, interesting. So it didn't follow the directions exactly, but honestly, I didn't give it a very explicit prompt, so it's fine. But what it did was it has numbers.py and it kept that. Then it created another file called numbers.txt and output numbers one to 200. And then it had a second file. And then it actually wrote the code to update numbers.txt with those numbers. So not quite what I asked for, but that's my fault for not a great prompt. And there's a lot of things you could do to make this code better. So for example, 
you might want to put these as environment variables, the model and the API key, and have them in a separate file, a .emv file, because you don't want to commit an API key, for example. And you can probably put the LLM config in a separate file and keep all the assistant agent and user proxy agent stuff all in the same file and just organize the code. But that's just a function of refactoring the code really well. But that's it. Now you can extend it. You can add more agents. You can give it different prompts. You can play around with the caching techniques. It's truly incredible. And I'm still working on getting an open source model set up with this. So as soon as I do that, I'll put out another video. And if you like this series, let me know. I want to create more stuff with Autogen. I'm so excited about it. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.